Hello fellow cyborgs, today I want to talk to you about the Indigathon. Since I did not post a goals video at the beginning of this year, you had no idea that I had been trying to focus on two specific minority groups this year that I wanted to read more from, that being the LGBTQIA2S plus community and also the indigenous communities. I've been doing a pretty okay job, though I haven't had that solely as my focus on my mind for a couple months, so I was really pleased to hear that Michelle and Bear are hosting the Indigathon again this year and it's really pumped me up to find more books that I want to read and to actually participate in this readathon. This is a month-long readathon that extends all through the month of November. It's hosted by Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter and Bear from A2 Brody. They have been hosting it, I think this is the third year. They're going to be doing giveaways. There's more information on their announcement videos and I am really, really excited to talk with you about the books that I could read for Indigathon. So when I was researching what to read this year, I found a bunch of books by Indigenous authors that I'm really motivated to get to. There is 56 of them, I think, and I want to read them this year and into next year. So I'm going to show you that whole list and then tell you specifically which of the books are going to fit the Indigathon prompts. Before I switch to showing you my computer screen and all of the books I want to read, let's first talk about the prompts for Indigathon. So the first prompt is to read the group book, which is Apple in the Middle by Don Quigley. The second prompt is to read a book with Indigenous Joy. The third prompt is to read a book that one of the two hosts recommended on their channel. The fourth prompt is to read a work of nonfiction by an Indigenous author. The fifth prompt is the land acknowledgement prompt, so to read a book by an author on whose land you are living. The sixth prompt is to read a book by an Indigenous author with your favorite color on the cover. The seventh prompt is to read an Indigenous poetry collection. And then finally, the eighth prompt is to read a book with an elder protagonist. And all of these books should be written by Indigenous authors in case I didn't make that clear. So let's jump into the huge list of books that I want to talk with you about and get to showing you what I'll be reading for this readathon. So this is my list and infographic or just graphic, I guess, of the 56 books by Indigenous authors that I would like to read not only for Indigathon coming up, but also just continuing into 2022. These are the ones that I'd like to prioritize as I continue reading more from Indigenous authors. So we're going to go through these one row at a time in detail, and I can tell you a little bit more about the books, about the authors, and why I want to pick them up. So starting here in these first three books, they're all by Stephen Graham Jones, who is a Blackfeet author. Night of the Mannequins is a novella that one of my subscribers recommended I go to after having read and really, really loved The Only Good Indian. So from what I know about this one, a teen prank goes horribly wrong and chaos ensues. It is a horror novella and I have a feeling that it has to do with mannequins coming to life. Mongrels is perhaps the book he's most well known for besides The Only Good Indians. This is a werewolf coming of age story from what I can tell. Werewolves are not my favorite horror creature to read about but I was so impressed with what I've already read by Jones that I'm practically going to give anything of his a try and this is definitely one that is highly recommended. My Heart is a Chainsaw is his newest release. It came out this year in 2021. In fact, it came, I think it came out in October. This follows a young native girl whose neighborhood is slowly being gentrified and she starts picking up on the fact that there might be a serial killer in her community. And good news, she loves slasher movies so she has a plan to stop this serial killer. I am really interested in this one, especially after hearing him talk about his new release on a couple of the horror literary podcasts I listen to, those being Talking Scared and Books in the Freezer. Next, we have White Magic by Alyssa Washuda. She is a Cowlitz, and this is a collection of essays. The part of the blurb that really interested me was talking about how white cultures have used and taken over elements of native spiritual culture, specifically with like saging and how appropriative that is. And I want to hear more about that as well as just get more of a snapshot into the life of a indigenous person, in this case, a Cowlitz woman. Next is The Lone Ranger and Tonto Fist Fight in Heaven by Sherman Alexie. Alexie is Spokane Cordellen and pretty much I didn't really know where to start with Alexie. I've heard a lot about his young adult novel, but he is a fairly prolific writer. And so I decided to start kind of at the beginning with this short story collection. But if you think this is a 
horror choice to start with Sherman Alexie, please let me know and I could easily be swayed. But I definitely want to read something by Sherman Alexie soon. So next is a poetry collection. This is It Was Never Going to Be Okay by Jane Simpson, who is OG Cree. I heard about this over at Virginia Woof's channel. She recently read this and really enjoyed it. This is an LGBTQIA2S plus collection. And this is one of the prompts specifically for Indigathon, which is to read a poetry collection. So this is definitely going to be one of the picks that I read for Indigathon. All right, so that is one of the picks. I have put a little ring around it and let's move on to the next line. So first we have Take Us to Your Chief and Other Stories by Drew Hayden Taylor, who's from Curve Lake First Nations. This is a short story collection, specifically, I believe, science fiction, but it might tumble into fantasy. This had such an interesting cover and I really liked the title as well that I thought that I would give this author a try, but I don't know very much else. But moving on to Ayaka, The Bird Who Fell in Love with the Sun. This is written by Sylvie Alvitre, who is a Tongva descendant of the Mumpitan clan, which is one of the native peoples whose land that I'm currently living on. And it is in combination with illustrator Carly Lake, who is not indigenous. So this is definitely a pick that I will be reading for Indigathon because this fulfills the land acknowledgement prompt to read a book by an author whose land you are living on. Next, we have Love After the End and an anthology of two-spirit and indigiqueer speculative fiction edited by Joshua Whitehead, who is Ojineya member of the Pegasus First Nation. Apologies for my mispronunciations. So this is an anthology of speculative fiction by Indigiqueer and Two-Spirit authors. I'm actually currently reading this with a friend and really enjoying it. So this soon will technically be checked off of this list, but I'm really enjoying it so far. And it's a nice introduction to a lot of different Indigiqueer and Two-Spirit authors who are Indigenous. So moving on is a novel by Joshua Whitehead. This is an LGBTQIA2 plus book about a Two-Spirit sex worker who has to go home for some reason. This doesn't really seem to have any magical or speculative elements in it, but I've heard good things from it, specifically from Bear at A2 Brody, as well as just looking it up on the internet. And so I think I want to give this a try. I might get to this during a digithon. We will just have to see. So moving on is another short story collection. This is This Accident of Being Lost by Leanne Betasamosek Simpson of the Michi Sagig Nishabeg. This is a short story collection that I heard high praise from a previous Indigathon TBR video whose channel I do not remember. I don't even remember what this is about. It was just a highly praised short story collection and I liked the cover and I don't have any other members of the Michi Sanig Nishnabeg nation for me to be reading. So I am interested to see how this one's going to go. And then moving on, this is The Seed Keeper, a novel by Diane Wilson of the Medewa Canton people. So this is a more general fiction book, and I think it's kind of biographical sort of feel to it, but I don't think it's based off of Wilson's life. And I remember it having to do with, there's a father and a daughter, and I think the father ends up leaving. I don't remember why, if he was imprisoned or if he got sick or if he left for another reason, but it has to do with him teaching her about gardening and relationship with nature. And I am very much a planty person these days. So this really intrigued me. This does not necessarily fit a prompt for Indigathon, though it's possible that it could fulfill the Indigenous Joy section, but I'm really looking forward to this one and I will probably be prioritizing it. It sounds really lovely. And the cover, if you look very closely, it's tiny beadwork and it's really beautiful. All right, let's move on to the next row. So I have three books by or edited by Cynthia Leetich Smith, who is Muskogee Creek. First, Hearts Unbroken is a contemporary YA book. The thing that really intrigued me about this was was in this book, her school is putting on a more inclusive version of the Wizard of Oz play. L. Frank Baum, the author of Wizard of Oz, was notoriously very racist against indigenous peoples. And so the conversations around that really intrigued me. I'm not sure how big of a part of the plot this is going to be, but otherwise it's just a native teenage girl navigating the complexities of being a teenager and also being native. And it sounded quite interesting. 
Next, we have a collection that was edited by Smith, and this is Ancestor Approved Intertribal Stories for Kids. So this is an anthology of stories from all different kinds of authors and aimed at children. This is one that might end up fitting for the Indigenous Joy prompt. I do want to prioritize this one, but I'm not sure exactly what prompt it will fulfill, but I definitely want to get to this sooner rather than later. And then finally is a similar young adult contemporary novel named Rain Is Not My Indian name. So this follows a young girl, Rain, who's really into photography, and she's had a friend recently die, and she's trying to deal with her grief over the loss of her friend. And I believe she starts being the photographer for a summer camp, if I remember correctly. It has to do with grief, and that's definitely one of my um, favorite buzzwords, even though it's such a heavy topic. It's something I like reading about, and I thought I would give this one a try as well. So I'm not sure which of the two young adult contemporaries I would want to start by Smith, and if you have an opinion, please let me know in the comments down below. So next we have Apple in the Middle by Don Quigley, who is Turtle Mountain Ojibwe. So this is the group read for Indigathon, so I will be reading this for the readathon. This is also Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letters, one of her favorite books, and I think she says this has Indigenous joy in it, but I do think it is in conversation about grief, and there's also an element of colorism to it as well, and of being a brown skin native. So I will definitely be reading this one for the readathon, and I can't wait to see what I think. So next we have The Braid by James Bird, who is Ojibwe. So this is about a young boy with OCD and he goes to live with his mom for the first time on a reservation. And there he meets a friend who is neurodivergent from what it sounds like. I'm really eager to read about a native perspective and also dealing with mental illness. I've been super impressed with all of the middle grade indigenous authors works that I've been seeing on the internet. And so I do have a lot of middle grade that I'm really eager to get to. This one, I'm not sure if it fits in the prompts yet, but I really want to read this one and hopefully I'll get to sneak it in in November as well. And then finally on this row, we have The Legend of Skeleton Man, a two book collection by Joseph Bruchok. Bruchok is a Noel Hagen Abenaki. So this is a bind up of two books that are all about the skeleton man. So this is about a young girl who's father, I can't remember exactly why he's absent, but he becomes absent in the course of the first book. And then a mysterious uncle comes to take care of her, but he is very, very thin and she doesn't quite trust him. So this is a like middle grade horror book that I am really excited to try. This is, I believe, also an older publication. I'm not sure when it came out, but this is not one of the freshest ones on the list. And that cover is just incredibly delightful. I really enjoy it. So I'm excited to try this one out. So moving on to to the next row. First, we have Corpse Whale by Dinig Nagnuk Akpik, who is Inupiaq Inuit. This is a poetry collection. The cover and title is pretty much what had me and the fact that this is from an Inuit perspective. I don't think I have any other Inuit authors on this list yet. So I don't really know what this poetry collection is about, but I am intrigued about it for sure. Next, we have A Two-Spirit Journey, the Autobiography of a Lesbian Ojibwe Cree Elder by Mani Chikabi with Mary Louisa Plummer. And as the title says, Chikabi is Ojibwe Cree. This is an autobiography as the title also says, this is an LGBTQIA2S plus pick, and I'm really eager to hear more about Two-Spirit Peoples, which I only have a very, very small grasp of what that might mean, and also reading an autobiography that centers around an elder. So this is definitely one of the picks that I will be reading for the nonfiction prompt of Indigathon, and I'm really, really excited for this one. So next we have two books by Christine Day, who is Upper Skagit. Both of these are middle grade. I Can Make This Promise is about a young girl who newly learns about her native heritage and has to explore that element of herself. The Sea in Winter, I think, is the one I want to read first, though. This is about a young girl who's had a major injury in her leg, and so she can no longer do the ballet that she really loves doing. She's having a lot of grief over this loss, and her family end up taking her to the ocean during winter time, and this becomes a place of healing for her. So again, grief, it's one of my morbid, but one of my morbid buzzwords, and I'm really eager to get to this. It doesn't necessarily fit into a prompt that I have, but 
but I definitely want to prioritize this one as well. One that does fit a prompt, however, is Drop Bear by Evelyn Araluen, who is an Indigenous Australian author. I couldn't find any more specifics than that. So I actually have this on my shelves. It was gifted to me from a friend for my birthday. And this is a nonfiction poetry, but also essay collection about being Indigenous in Australia. So this goes for the prompt of favorite color on the cover. This green is a pretty close match to my favorite color green. So I am eager to be picking this up and reading more by an Australian author. And then finally on this row, we have a collection, New Poets of Native Nations, edited by Hyde E. Erdrich. She is Turtle Mountain Ojibwe. So this is a collection of young native poets. And I just thought it would be fun to read what the like youngest poets of different native nations are writing these days and getting a taste for different poets. And yeah, this is not one that I'll be reading relatively soon, but it's one on my radar that I definitely want to keep open, open mind of. And now that I put a ring around Drop Bear, which I forgot to do before, let's go ahead and move on to the next row. First off, we have Moon of the Crushed Snow by Wabgeshig Rice, who is Anishinaabe. This is, from what I can tell, a post-apocalyptic book, and it seems to have a trapped sort of feeling. There's a community in a snow-ridden place, and new people end up coming to the community, and it ends up becoming more of a thriller sort of thing. I'm intrigued. I love the winter setting. I loved the idea that people are trapped by something. So this is definitely one that I am interested in giving a try. And then we have My Place by Sally Morgan. This is one of the Australian classics, as the you know front cover says. She is Bailgu, Bailgu. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. This is her memoir about growing up Indigenous in Australia, and I would really be interested in getting more of an Australian perspective as well. Next on, we have Everything You Wanted to Know About Indians But Were Afraid to Ask by Anton Troyer, who is Ojibwe. This is a nonfiction book, and the title kind of says it all. This, I've been told, is a fairly good place to start on like basic knowledge nonfiction about Indigenous communities by a Indigenous author. I definitely want to read this one soon, but this is not one of the ones I put to the prompts for Indigathon, but I will be getting to this soon. Then we have Shadow Boxing by Tony Birch, who is Indigenous Australian. I couldn't get any more specifics than that. So this is a short story collection. I believe it's interconnected short stories all about a boy growing up in a Melbourne suburb in the 1960s. So again, a Australian Indigenous perspective that I am looking forward to. I've heard Australian booktubers talk about Tony Birch, so he seems to be fairly prolific. And this is just the place that I decided to start at. Then we have Tara Nullius by Claire G. Coleman, who who is Wirloman Noongar Australian. This is, I think it's a post-apocalyptic or an apocalyptic novel, and it is an Australian perspective. I don't know very much more about this one, but it seemed intriguing, and I am definitely eager to try it. And then one of the last Australian picks is Bindi by Curly Saunders, who is Gunai with Dub Leffler. This is a middle grade book told in verse about a young girl named Bindi, and it's pretty much just follows her around. I believe she is an Indigenous young woman, I believe. And it's just her and her life. She likes horseback riding, meeting friends. I don't know very much more about that. I am always intrigued by books in verse, and I am excited to give this a try at some point. That one's going to be, a lot of the Australian ones are going to be harder for me to get because they are Australian authors. So we will see how successful I am in finding those. Moving on, we have Stone River Crossing by Tim Tingle, who is Oklahoma Choctaw. This is a middle grade, historical middle grade book. So this is about a young Choctaw girl who is told to never cross the river that borders her family's land. And one day she does, as children do, and she finds a young enslaved boy who's living on the plantation that is across the river. And I believe it ends up being her trying to help him and his family get to freedom. By crossing the river. This seems like it could be heavy, but um, I'm hopeful that because it's middle grade, it's not going to be soul sucking. This is one that I am really eager to get to, but not one that I will be reading for the readathon specifically. And then we have Alatsue by Darcy Little Badger, who is Lip and Apache, with illustrations by Rovina Kai. I'm sure you have heard about this one. It is, I 
think it is bordering middle grade and young adult. And it is about a our young protagonist. Her cousin is a ghost and he comes to her because she can see ghosts and tells her that he has been murdered. And so she needs to figure out what happened. I've also heard that she is asexual and I'm really eager to see that rep. This is not one I'll be reading for the readathon, but I'm really excited for this one. A lot of people have quite enjoyed it. And then this is one of the few books that is not by an Indigenous author, but it surrounds Indigenous people. This is Tall Man, The Death of Dumaji by Chloe Hooper. So Chloe Hooper is not Indigenous. This is a true crime nonfiction about, I think it was in 2004 or 2006, in Australia, an Indigenous man, Dumaji, was arrested and then minutes or hours later, he was dead in the jail cell. And this is investigating his murder and also what it is like to be an Indigenous person in modern Australia. So I have heard good things from this author. I have an Australian friend who's read another book by Chloe Hooper. And I'm interested to hear about this true crime case. So this is not by an Indigenous author, but this is still one that I'm interested in reading about. The next true crime nonfiction, however, is by an Indigenous author. This is Seven Fallen Feathers, Racism, Death, and Hard Truths in a Northern City by Tanya Talaga, who is Ojibwe. This is about seven young people who were found dead fairly soon one after another in a small community, in a relatively small community in the United States. And this is delving into all of everything that surrounds their deaths and everything culture-wise that they have been having to deal with, again, being a modern Indigenous person this time in the United States, if I remember correctly. Next, let's talk about Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese, who is Ojibwe. This is about a young boy who is taken to a residential school in Canada and finds his love of hockey to cope with the horrors of his situation. So this was, is going to be a heavy one, but this is one of the few books I have from a Canadian perspective and specifically about residential schools. So it's one that I definitely want to try. Moving on, we have The Bone People by Carrie Holm, who's Maori. This is about a half Maori, half European asexual aromantic artist who one day a young boy shows up at her doorstep and she ends up forming a relationship with him and also his foster father. So this is one of the few books I have from a Maori perspective and this also has elements of magical realism from what I can tell. I think this one's also going to be fairly heavy. I'm not sure but this is one that I definitely want to try. All right, down to our final row of books that I want to talk with you about. This first one is Winter Counts by David Heska Wandley Wyden, who is Sakanga Lakota. This is a thriller kind of vigilante book about a man who starts investigating the influx of drugs in his native community. This is the book that Michelle from Thor Wants a Letter really loves. This is counting for the host recommendation pick for Indigathon. I've heard that there are many a trigger warning in this, but I am hoping that I can get through it and that I will enjoy it on one level or another. Okay, so now that we have the ring around that, let's talk about This Land is Their Land, The Wampanoag Indians, Plymouth Colony, and the Troubled History of Thanksgiving by David J. Silverman. I am not sure if Silverman is Indigenous. I had a really hard time finding information online. I know he is a scholar for Native American peoples in the United States, and he has written multiple things and taught classes about this topic, but I do not know if he is Indigenous himself. But this is a nonfiction that explores the troubled history of Thanksgiving and the mythology that Americans tell ourselves about it. This is a book I believe Acacia has a copy for me that she'll be sending my way at some point, so I will be reading the physical copy of this most likely. I've heard that it's slow and depressing, but it's something that every time Thanksgiving rolls around, I think that I should know more about and have a reality check about this problematic holiday that Americans still revere. So yes, this is one that I definitely will be getting to. And next we have Beadworker Stories by Beth Piatote or Piatote. I'm not sure, did not look that up before I started, but I did look up that she is part of Chief Joseph's and the Colville Confederated Tribes. I don't know what this is about. I heard Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings talk about it on her channel a few years ago, and this short story collection has been in my mind since, and I also can get a free copy from my local library. These, I believe, are contemporary short stories. 
over various things. I don't think that they are magical realism or anything. I think they are realistic, but I'm eager to give it a try and see some more snapshots into native life. And then we have Two Old Women, an Alaskan legend of betrayal, courage, and survival by Velma Wallace, who is Gwich'in Athabaskan. This looks like it's a nonfiction, but actually it is a fictionalized account of what may have happened to two old women when they were abandoned by their families in the Alaskan wilderness. It is based on an Athabaskan legend, and apparently these women were abandoned because there was a winter famine and they were the... I guess the people who could be sacrificed for the good of everybody else. This I feel true crime vibes about. So this is definitely one that I will be prioritizing and this will be fulfilling the prompt of reading a book with an elderly protagonist or an elder protagonist since the, you know, title is too old women. So moving on, we have Empire of Wild by Sherry DeMoline, who is Métis. So this is about a woman whose husband either goes missing or is presumed dead. And then later he pops up as the leader of a cult and he might be a Rougarou, which is a creature from Métis mythology. I've heard a lot of good things about this. I've seen it on booktube a lot. This is not one that I am super excited for simply because of the hype and I'm not super into cults like some other people are. I'm looking at you, Acacia, but it's definitely something that I have heard good things about and I would like to try. So Empire of Wild by Sherry Dimeline. If I said her name incorrectly, please correct me. I appreciate it. Thank you. So moving on to the final book I would like to talk about today but there are more, but these were just the priorities. I have A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott, who is Mohawk. This is a nonfiction memoir specifically about mental illness within the Native community and specifically Elliott's experience of it. This was recommended to me by Acacia. I love this cover so very much and my library has a copy of it, so I will most likely be listening to this memoir and learn a little bit more about the intersection between Mohawk culture and mental illness. So without any further ado, these are the seven books because I'm not sure about that Indigenous Joy prompt that I will be reading for Indigathon. So we have Two Old Women, which will fulfill the Elder Protagonist prompt, Winter Counts, which will fulfill the host recommendation prompt. Up here, we have Drop Bear that will fulfill the favorite color on the cover prompt. A Two-Spirit Journey, which will fulfill the nonfiction prompt. Apple in the Middle, which is the group book prompt. Wayaka, the Bird Who Fell in Love with the Sun, which will fulfill the land acknowledgement prompt. And It Was Never Going to Be Okay, which is the poetry prompt. So yes, and then I will be reading something else and hopefully it will have indigenous joy in it. So meanwhile, back to Face Amanda. So that is a large number of books, but I think I can get through the majority of them in the next couple years. And fortunately, surprisingly, but relievingly, relievably, I with relief, I am relieved to know that my local library has a bunch of these books already in their system. So thankfully, I will not have to be buying 50 books to do this challenge that I have imposed on myself or to participate in the Indigathon. So I'm really excited, really pumped. I am hopefully going to be reading more than just the eight books that I showed you because I have such easy access to a lot of books. And yes, if you're having a hard time researching books by Indigenous authors, I found it really helpful to find an online Indigenous bookstore and then to go through their catalog. I specifically really liked Birchbark books and I just went through their catalog and looked at things that I was interested in and it was written by an Indigenous author that made it really easy. And of course, listening to booktube recommendations, specifically Indigenous Indigenous booktubers is always a good thing to do as well. So anyway, I hope that you find books that you are pumped to read that are by Indigenous authors and that you will be able to participate at least partially in Indigathon. Please let me know in the comments down below if you particularly want me to get to any of these books sooner rather than later. If you enjoyed them, if they sound extra intriguing, I would love for you to be nosy and just give me extra information down in the comments. And until next time, read a book by an Indigenous author and continue to be lovely.